Good morning and welcome to Bolton. I'm Joyce Stilley, the Administrative Officer for the Town of Bolton. And this is a live show done the first and the third Tuesdays of each month from 10.30 to 11 a.m. The show is a continuing effort to promote open communications within the community. And if you have any event going on or just have a question about how town government operates or want to get PR out about your organization, please contact me at the town hall and we will try to get something on the air that covers that topic. As we go through the course of time, sometimes we forget about where we are actually doing the show and all of the people and things that it takes to make this show possible. So today my special guest is Nick Levine, who is Community Voice Channel Executive Director. Welcome. Ah, thank you. Or should I say welcome to me to your set that you made possible for me. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so uh, ironically, as we talked about a little bit before this show started, it, I evidently have a habit of breaking cameras or something because it was my show that you had big issues happen. And CVC has been working a long time towards trying to upgrade. Right. Yeah, the original um, standard definition system broke on the day of one of your shows. So it looked really insane on the uh, <laughs> on the final product, which probably annoys you <laughs> quite a bit. But um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because on that day, we had been working up for one clocks back. We'd been working for about two years trying to raise money in order to get a new studio because at some point that old studio was going to break. Right. Unfortunately, it happened during a show, but I mean, I guess in the end, that's the only time it was going to happen. Um, and then on the day that it broke for your show, uh, I come in and I'm trying to fix it. And I, that's when I realized there's no way I'm going to fix this. And about 10 minutes later, I get a call from the Hartford Foundation for Giving. And that's the day that they called to tell me that uh, I got the grant for the new studio. So they agreed to do about um, a 60-40 on the new it. studio, somewhere around there. And that was the day that we got the grant. So we were able to finally start the process of creating the new studio and getting the parts and someone to build the control room. And we're going to do a switch over to high def. Yep. I don't, if you want to do it yeah. now uh, is a so good time. So if we go to camera two, um, we can now change over to uh, 4K. And of course that happened in editing, but, <laughs> but now we're in 4K. So things should look a lot sharper, a lot sharper. And um, yeah, there's just a, a basic uh, resolution and um, detail boost yes. that is about, oh man, 25 times from what it was. I mean, if you take 1080p, right. and that's five times greater than standard definition, and then 4K is four times greater than, I mean, it's just on the screen, a 4K, a, a standard definition image on a 4K image is like a tiny little box. And maybe I'll represent that in post and show people just how small that box would have been in comparison. But yeah, 4K is much, much better looking, no matter what you're going to do. And actually, you know, timing is everything that you received the grant uh, announcement the same day. Um, your fundraising efforts, you know, have continued over the years. But that was just the start of the process, really, because since that period of time, while my show has continued and we say we're live, basically it's no editing. Right. But you've not been able to do it actually live same day. We've had to pre-tape it and show yeah. it. Yeah, that's how it's been uh, going on ever since the system broke. You had to keep coming in and taping early, and then we would air it later. And after this show, you can go back to live, which will be, you know, the live is always good because you're able to hit a topic earlier than you would ever have be, ever be able to if right. you had to pre-record it. So you could actually, 
if something happened the day before in Bolton that was really important, you could just do it. That would be your next show immediately, right. no problems, right. and it would air that day. So the immediacy of live is something that uh, is very important. And when you have to wrangle in taping time and then editing time and then finally airing it, that immediacy and the pertinent topics really, they start to become older. Uh, but I, I will, you know, all the volunteers that you have and staff here have been excellent to work with over this course of time. Oh, thanks. And, and actually my last show, was we actually taped remotely at the Notch Road Municipal right. Center because you were in the final yeah, setup yeah. things here. Yeah, this room was a complete mess. It's still kind of a mess. Uh, people just can't see it. <laughs> uh, it's hidden. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, there was just a lot of cables being made, a lot of boxes coming in, uh, things getting screwed together. And yeah, it would have been very impossible for you to do your show without hearing uh, drills and whatnot going off. And let's talk a little bit about the steps to get to where this is and what all had to be changed out. I mean, it's not just the flip of a switch. Right. It, it goes into lots of your equipment. So over, over the few months, I had to break down a lot of uh, wooden consoles, get them into the dumpster. And the old equipment, you have to rip that out. And old equipment weighs a ton, so of that's course. awful. Um, and then, of course, there's dead bugs and everything that you got to deal with. But that took a long time to wrangle all that stuff out of that room and then get the room, you know, the floor resurfaced and everything. Because once you get the new system in, it's going to be like another 10 years before that ever gets touched right. again. Um, and then... Uh, and then as time goes on, uh, you basically you hire somebody to build a new console out of wood or if you built it out of metal, that, that'd be fine. But they're a little bit more sturdy when they're made out of solid woods. Um, and for the most part, it was just uh, shifting the old equipment into a dumpster, essentially. And... Um, taking the new equipment and building that area out. But it took a lot of time because of back-ordered items and things like that, which we're still actually waiting on a couple more items. <laughs> but it, it does have a totally different look. Oh, yeah, yeah. It looks question. a lot more sleek. All the black cameras and, and, and the fact that it's widescreen now yes. really helps. Um, it really helps you to... Uh, make a shot look better anyways uh, because most things people are used to are in widescreen now anyways and the verticality of uh, not widescreen is kind of annoying so what uh, you know the the funding are do are you in arrears at all are you still looking for donations we are from actually anybody? still looking for donations so there's the lighting system that's actually lighting us right now is expensive to run because each bulb is uh, a thousand watts. Um, they're essentially halogen bulbs and you have to run a bunch of them. So like right now we're running like, I don't know, 13,000 watts um, just to create the light that we have right now, um, which is kind of spotty and, you know, there's not really enough. So we are looking to get donations to try to get a new lighting system that would be LED and would generate a lot less heat, which, you know, we have to run an air conditioner right now, uh, generate a lot less heat, um, fill this room with more light and be far more controllable because currently these aren't dimmable. Right. They're on full blast. At right. All times. And they're either on or off. Yeah. So, we are still looking for donations because that's essentially the final step to making the studio brand new and whole. And, you know, I was here when it was the old firehouse. It had just moved into the new firehouse, and this was a vacant building that we used for various other purposes. So I've seen the gradual changes and massive changes as they've occurred. And, um, 
you know, I know a lot of people that do my show consider this their warming station because of the lights and the heat <laughs> that it, they put out. Oh, yeah, it's brutal. Yeah, um, I'm not a big fan of heat. So, in fact, the air conditioner just kicked on. <laughs> yes. So, um, I would per much prefer nice, cool, cost efficient LED lighting. And, you know, Community Voice Channel people may say, why are you investing all this money in this studio? What are you thinking? What are you doing? I don't think, perhaps you can talk a little bit about just what CVC does. And, you know, I, I take advantage of it, certainly. And there's so many opportunities for people to do things. Perhaps you could talk right. just a little bit about CVC so itself. So Community Voice Channel is a nonprofit public access station. That means that anybody that lives within the seven towns, one being Bolton, um, can come in and learn how to use any of the equipment, whether it is the studio equipment or it's our field equipment where you go out with cameras, like when your show was remote. Right. You go out with cameras and shoot something, and then you can edit it. And that's all for free. So that's what a lot of people, I, I, some people have actually, like, they question me, like, whether or not it's free. Like, they give you that, like, yeah, Early? where are you <laughs> yes. going to, and it's like, no, it's, it's legitimately free. Uh, <laughs> so that allows people to learn um, and get their hands on equipment that otherwise they would have to shell out lots of money for in order to create a show that maybe they've been thinking about making or that they wanted to see if they were actually interested in making a show. So the whole point of it is to allow people to get their ideas out there, their political views, um, maybe just some art, like they wanted to shoot a short film or a full-on movie. This allows them to do that um, and learn how to do that mm -hmm. without blowing tons of money because you'd have to buy a camera. Right. You'd have to get a computer that's strong enough to edit. You'd have to get the software that you can edit on. You'd have to get the microphone so your thing can actually be heard and not just be like the whistling of the trees while your actors are speaking and you don't hear them at all. Um, so it has a lot of value. Whether, whether or not you actually do want to make a show or you just want to help out on a show or you just want to learn how things are done, it's all there for you completely for free. And the upgrade from standard def to 4K, aside from the fact that it broke, um, was needed because when we're trying to teach people something, we want to teach them current things that yes. are out in the world. And analog standard definition was not remotely current and out in the world, but digital high definition is. So when you come in here, you can see a control surface that's you know, more geared towards the industry as a whole. And you can deal with cameras that are um, broadcast cameras. They're not just like little handy cams or something that are uh, vastly different from these cameras. So all of that together, and you learn a lot more from this new system because it's something that if you were to decide, I want to do this for a job, I'll you know, go get a degree or maybe you have a degree that's already comparable, you, you know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. It's not a shock. Um, like if you go to UConn and you were to do video production or filmmaking, it's mostly book. Like there's not really a whole lot of hands-on. So a public access station is a great place to actually get to use the things because maybe one day, you know, you're, you're doing that out of the book, and it's like, okay, <coughs> that seems all right. But then when you actually go use it, that's the day that you can decide, are you, do you actually like it, or do you like it a lot? <laughs> so it's, it's very useful. And, you know, you, you mentioned about people can come learn. Uh, you have regular training classes, right. and perhaps you could talk about the different classes that people can go through. Sure. So we do have <coughs> uh, studio classes and field classes. The studio classes is you and a group, whether you know the people in the group or not. Um, come here, you learn the cameras, you learn how to set up the shots. You learn how to set up the graphics. You learn how to keep the audio balanced. You learn how um, to use the switcher. And it may seem like, you know, me just rattling that off sounds like, you know, really easy. 
<laughs> but really, when you get to the graphics and when you get to the switcher, that's when people start to discover that um, it's more like a high-risk, uh, hit-the-right-button video game right. than it is um, just uh, nice and relaxed, like, tapping buttons and everything always works out. So it, it, it's, a, it's a bit more involved than people tend to think that uh, you only truly know that once you actually try it. And, you know, I know when I first started doing this show, which I can't tell you how many years ago it was, at that point in time, it was very challenging to even get up, uh, you know, like a PowerPoint or pictures. I mean, it was yeah. took a loading process that took time and couldn't be done quickly and efficiently. Right. So now we we have a, a new graphic system and a um, a new. Um, uh, new input system. So the new graphic system allows you to do a bunch of things, uh, you know, with moving graphics, putting in, you know, videos. But we could also allow you to plug in your laptop right here and run a slideshow right from the wall. An example, if in the studio they were to cut to this camera in picture in picture, um, this is plugged into the studio right behind us. So there's me, there's the cameraman. Eh, there's you. Yeah. And th this, although this is a camera, and it's a little GoPro, but it's actually putting out full 4K at 30, um, you can plug your laptop into that same port, and you could run PowerPoint through it. So you could completely control the graphics that you want to show on your own. You wouldn't actually even need to worry about the graphics person, they could still throw your name up while you're throwing up, uh, you know, pictures and videos from the day, and we would just cut to it like this camera. So that's the uh, that's the benefits, and you can do that actually from uh, any room in the building. Excellent. So. <laughs> no, but it, it just shows you know technology and whether you want to look at this facility itself, how it has advanced. It's the same thing with your technology in it. The building has changed for the better and right. is growing with time. So has all of your equipment for Community Voice Channel. Right. Even right down to how people edit here has grown. It used to be that we'd plug in a bunch of hard drives and they'd fill up. But now everyone just edits off the same massive bank of hard drives and there's no plugging it in. You just call up your name and you start editing and it's backed up so that's good. And even over the course of time people may not realize it but you know m my show for example was shown live and it would be shown only on the first and the third and the second and the fourth Tuesdays at the same time maybe some other time but if you didn't catch it then tough. Yeah, yeah. And that's not true anymore. You no. You can go on to yeah. the so now CBC if you were to, website. Yeah, now if you were to go to our website and click on demand, you could look up all the episodes of your show and watch them at your leisure. Um, you could, of course, still ask us for a DVD, but you know, you'd yes. have to pay for that. But it's a lot easier to just go online, quickly watch it, and uh, exit out. A good example of that is actually um, what was that, four years ago, there was the algae problem at the lake and they yes. were trying to solve that. I had people, because they had missed it, Yes. <laughs> I had people calling, uh, at least 10 people call, uh, wondering how they can watch it and they would have to get the DVDs. And now it's just as easy as them going online and calling it up. And, and that's the positive changes that have occurred. So let's talk about you know, now you're finalizing this massive upgrade and talked about the lights. Future holds? I, obviously, so there is actually one thing that I've always wanted to do, but that that's harder. Um, I always wanted to teach an actual movie making class, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a whole nother suite of a different style of camera, a different style of lenses, uh, definitely a different style of workflow in the editing area. And that would require definitely 
more donations and another grant. But I think that that would be very interesting for a lot of people. We have actually a lot of people yes. who come in here now trying to make short films and full movies. But although I'm able to teach them you know what what they sh what they can do now and i usually like leave in like even what you usually do you know actually right. on set at a movie uh <laughs> set um is slightly different but i would really enjoy teaching them um without having to explain what aspect you would change out right. in the field um i would love to teach that from scratch with all the proper equipment that would be something that I would be very much uh, into and love to do. And as far as your programming, you have several different stations. What, you know, there's still opportunities. You're still looking for people to do things. Perhaps you can talk right. about that. So on our public station, we show shows like this and short films and talk shows and religious shows. Uh, dance things, basically the public channel is everything. Um, and it's always good to get more people in here so we can get more shows onto that channel. Um, but it's also good, we have an education channel, and if anybody is watching who works with, um, you know, the schools or works at the library or works at any of the educational municipalities, I guess. Um, we need a lot more shows from those, like school games, um, concerts. school activities, the concerts, uh, stuff that's going on at yes. the library. Yeah, the graduations. Um, the more people, we would definitely like more people for that channel. Um, whether or not they work at the school or not, it would just be uh, really beneficial to get more of the education geared shows onto that channel. And as for our last channel, that's government. Right. And that's that is strictly government meetings. That's what it <laughs> that's what it's for. That is what um, I believe they're called Pura now. Uh, or the because they used to be the DPUC. Right. Yeah, so they're Pura. Um, that's what they mandate that channel is for, is government meetings. And the reason for that is uh, to be able, not everybody in this day and age comes out to things, right. but they will easily watch things at home. Exactly. And to watch the selectmen's meeting, uh, some other towns might have their board of ed, their board of finance, their planning and zoning. It just depends on the community yeah. as to their setup and what they're able to do. And if you're already going to those and you live in a town and you've noticed that our channel doesn't seem to air your town, like Marlboro. Um, and occasionally it, Bolton. Yeah, and occasionally <laughs> Bolton. Um, then, and you're going to those meetings, then it would be excellent if you came to us, asked about learning the equipment, so you could film those meetings for them. And then everyone could see those meetings that you're already going to. Just put in that, uh, that little bit of volunteering and then everyone can see it. And, and that's advantageous for everybody. And, you know, it only helps, uh, definitely. Yeah. So if people are interested, do you have some classes coming up? So currently for the studio, um, classes will start either October or November, um, most likely October. Um, it's just about making sure that the staff and everybody is... Um, uh, comfortable with the new right. equipment um, instead of uh, it just being me oh, from details. having details, to play right. around with it. Yeah, <laughs> so I've been forced to play around with it because I, I have to get it working. But uh, everyone else needs to now um, learn how to do it so they can teach others. This year is different. First of all, we're just finishing the summer. I don't know what happened to it, but it's gone. And now with the new equipment, you know, it takes time yeah. to be prepared to make sure that you can share the correct information and learn everything about it right. first. I mean, and there are classes for the equipment that we've always had, like the high definition um, field cameras. But that's really, you can come in and learn those. Uh, maybe that's not what people know, unless of course they call. Um, if you want to learn the field stuff, you don't need to wait for a class. Um, the class kind of comes to you. You just have to call us, say when you're available, and we'll try to work out a time that you can come in and 
start using that equipment as soon as possible. Okay. So that one, you don't have to wait around. But the studio, unfortunately, you need more than one person. <laughs> Uh, yes, and, and you know, having done many, many, many of these shows, it depends on the day and what's happening in people's lives as to how many people are here to help with certainly my show. And I know sometimes it's been more challenging than others, and to have more volunteers would yeah, be a benefit morning. to everybody. <laughs> yes, yes, it would. Um, the morning's always hard. <laughs> yes. Um, because people are going to work. Yes. Um, but even for stuff that we do in the afternoon, you know, um, the more people, the better. And because we actually have all the new equipment, all of our old volunteers kind of have to come back in for a refresher. Right. Right. So we'll be expecting a lot of people having to take the classes, whether it be a refresher or brand new. And we should talk a little bit, we probably only have a couple minutes left, uh, about where do we go from here? How can people help you? What do you need from us? And how can we continue to work together? So from here, um, we, we mostly just, we need the lighting, the new lighting, um, and you know more volunteers. That's really how people could help us is coming in learning and helping out on shows making a new show uh filming town meetings that would be a big help um that that would be the major thing okay. that we would need is i mean donations of like copy paper and things like that are are an excellent way to help um because if we're not spending money on copying paper, then we can spend money on, you know, um, memory cards right. and batteries right. and, you know, things that uh, are more geared towards the equipment, which is what I, you know, we, which is what would be better for us to spend our money on anyways than paper towels. Okay. So definitely volunteering, um, small items and the lighting system is where okay. we would like to be. Excellent. Always more volunteers. <laughs> it's the same thing for the town more <laughs> volunteers we never can have enough and you know it, it's uh, people's lives have changed so much it's a, a different thing but anytime you can get back to your community community voice channel those kinds of agencies that's what makes America what it is yeah so and there's always something you can volunteer for that that's right that matches what you like that's right I wholeheartedly agree Thank you very much for joining me today in your studio. Yeah, thank you. And uh, just a couple of items. Uh, this week will actually be a Board of Finance meeting, but more importantly, on the 18th is the 300th anniversary in 2020. Bolton turns 300. So again, if you have the opportunity to come to that meeting, it's at 7 p.m. at Town Hall. The next show will actually be on fire prevention will already be into October. Thank you again to Community Voice Channel and all the volunteers and staff here who make this show possible. I'll see you in two weeks.